Okay, this will be section 3.3, which is still continuing the conversation. All of chapter three will be about polynomials, okay? Um, well, most of chapter three will be about polynomials. And then the very end, we'll go back to rational expressions, okay? But for right now, we're still gonna be talking about polynomials for the next two sections. So in this section, we're going to learn a little bit more, okay? to really encompass all polynomials, okay? Because right now, I am hoping that I can factor these polynomials so that I could pick out what the zeros are, okay? Um, but it may just be the case that um, your polynomial cannot be factored or it can't be factored in a way, in a conventional way where it's always gonna be X minus some number, okay? Um, sometimes it may be the case that we have imaginary zeros. Sometimes we have the case where we have irrational zeros, and those are the kinds where you still have like a radical inside your solution. Um, and so we definitely need to address polynomials that have those kinds of um, zeros, okay? So before we can get to those, we have to talk about um, the strategies to find them, okay? And in those strategies comes division, synthetic division, remainder theorem, factor theorem, the whole works, okay? So it's really gonna complete, uh, it's just gonna add another level to what we can do, okay? So, for the division of polynomials. Now, in this example, it says, suppose that you were given a graph and it's 6x cubed minus 19x squared plus 16x minus 4, okay? And you notice that on the graph, you have this zero at x equals 2. But you also notice that you have these two other zeros and you don't know exactly where they are, okay? And we know from the last section that applying that intermediate value theorem can take quite a while sometimes, okay? So let's see if there's maybe another way, right? Um, it says that because the two is of zero, we know that X minus that zero is a factor, okay? Which means that the function should be able to be written as with this factor times something else, okay? And in order for me to find the something else to eventually hopefully factor that as well, um, I am going to have to use division, okay? So if I wanna divide the whole polynomial by this factor to figure out what the rest of the polynomial looks like, um, here they have it all worked out. Now, you do go in pieces. So the first thing that you're going to look at is this first term, and you always look at this first term, okay? The second term really doesn't matter. It, it, it has a consequential effect, but it does no effect on you determining what goes at the top, okay? So you take six X cubed divided by this X, and that's exactly what they've done here. Six X cubed divided by X, and the result they found was six X squared. So they placed the six X squared here. Then what happens with everything that goes up here is it gets distributed to what's in the front. So six X squared times X is six X cubed. 6x squared times negative 2 is negative 12x squared. Then what they do is they subtract these values. Now, if I'm subtracting two terms, what that's going to do is it's going to make me change the sign of both of those terms. So this one's going to turn to negative, and this one's going to turn to positive. And I like to circle them so I know which one's the new sign, okay? So really you have six X cubed minus six X cubed, which means the six X cubes cancel. And here you have negative 19 X squared plus 12 X squared, which is where they get negative seven X squared from. And then these guys just came down. Okay, well, you only need one term because you only have two terms out here. So you only needed one term to come down. Now you repeat the whole process again, okay, but, this time you're talking about this guy and still the guy in the front, okay? So over here, notice that they put negative seven X squared over X 
and they determined that that was negative seven. So they placed the negative seven up top, negative seven. If it was positive seven, this would have said plus seven, okay? Then that negative seven, the whole negative seven has to get distributed to the front. So this whole negative seven gets multiplied by X, that's negative seven X squared. And the negative seven X also gets multiplied by negative two, which makes positive 14 X. And similarly, again, if I'm going to subtract these, that means this one's gonna change to positive and this one's gonna change to negative. So you have negative seven X squared plus seven X squared, which is going to cancel. And you have positive 16 X minus 14 X, which is a positive two X. And then you repeat the process again. So now I'm going to take this two X and this X, and that is the two X that you see up there, okay? And then two X divided by X is just two. And since it's positive, notice they put plus two, okay? And then that two, just like all the other guys, this two has to get distributed. So two times X is two X, two times negative two is negative four. And if I'm subtracting, this turns to a negative and this turns to a positive, these will cancel. And it turns out that those cancel also, giving me zero at the bottom, okay? And this is where some information is important. This up here at the top, all of that is called your quotient. So your quotient in this case is 6x squared minus 7x plus 2. Down here, though, is called your remainder. And your remainder is zero in this case, which means that it divided it out, it divided out evenly. Okay. X minus two goes into that polynomial six X cubed minus 19 X squared plus 16 X minus four evenly. Okay. With no remainder. Now that's great, right? It's a whole long process. Okay. So once you're done with that, then you know that you had this factor that you started with, and now you have that quotient, right? Which was why they called it Q of X, because you were gonna get it by finding the quotient, okay? And since this is a quadratic, you can factor quadratics using the AC method. So if I go over here to the side, this times this is 12, um, and I think it's three times four. So I get six X squared minus three X minus four X plus two. These guys have a three X in common. This has a minus and a two in common. Um, this times this is that, this times this is that, that times that is that, that times that is that, okay. And then they have the two X minus one in common. And so notice that I got the exact same factors that they got for that, okay, using the AC method. Some of you do trial and error, and that's okay, as long as you get the correct answer. Um, but there you have it, okay? And so now they were able, once they knew about that long division, they're able to get this in its factored form, okay? Which is exactly what you need to be able to get the zeros, right? Now, um, if you took that same function, 6x cubed minus 19x squared plus 16x minus 4, um, notice that when we did the long division process, the remainder uh, was 0, okay? Often, though, in long division, you will produce um, a non-zero remainder, okay? So, for instance, let's just say we took this function and tried to divide it by x plus 1, okay? If I take the first guys again, these guys, I have the x squared on the inside divided by the x on the outside. I just get x, which is where this guy came from. Then this guy distributed, right? So x times x was x squared, x times one is one x. And then I'm going to subtract. So this becomes negative, this becomes negative. x squared minus x squared cancels. Three x minus one x is two x. And then we brought down the next number. Then we repeated the process again. So now we're doing um, now we're doing um, 
2x divided by x. And I get 2. And so that's where this positive 2 came from at the top. And then that positive 2 has to get distributed to x. And so you get 2x and 2. And then you have to subtract. So you change this sign and you change this sign. 2x minus 2x goes away. But 5 minus 2 is 3. Okay, And so you do have a remainder of 3 on this particular problem. Now, what's important is that we use the division algorithm, okay? And so the algorithm tells us that if you have a function um, and you divide it by something, x minus c, okay? What you're going to end up with is your quotient after the division plus the remainder over the divisor. OK, um, or if you do it another way, if the divisor is also the same x minus c, right? OK, so if I were to multiply everybody by x minus c, notice that the function says x minus c times the quotient plus, and the x minus c would cancel here, the remainder. Okay, and so this is what they call the division algorithm. Okay, so you can rewrite the function. You can divide the function by a, a factor. And then when you know the quotient and the remainder, you have another way to write the function. Okay, and that's called the division factor. So notice that this was what I was dividing by, right? This was on the outside of the house. This was what we got for our quotient. And then this was what we got for our remainder. Okay. So it's your divisor times your quotient plus your remainder. Now, that's just explaining the same thing here, okay? Your function can be written as your divisor times your quotient plus your remainder, okay? And if your remainder is zero, then you know that it divides evenly and you just have the product and that's it. You don't have to put plus zero, right? Okay, now, um, you only need to do this if the fraction is improper, meaning that the top has a bigger degree or a bigger exponent than the bottom, okay? Whereas when the top exponent has a smaller degree than the bottom, it's called a proper fraction. Now, before we do the division algorithm, we have to follow these steps. One is you need to write the dividend and the divisor in descending orders, okay? And then two, you have to insert placeholders for terms that are missing, okay? So let's go see. Oh, I don't think they have an example of one where they're missing terms. I will make one up just so that you can see it, okay? Or no, we don't have to because we don't do a whole bunch of long division in this class, just FYI. For the most part, we're gonna be doing something called synthetic division. And that's gonna be the next topic that I talk about. But even with synthetic division, you have to make sure that you do these two things, okay? You have to write everything in descending order. And if anybody's missing, you have to fill in the holes, okay? With zeros. So this is gonna be really cumbersome to try to explain. It's best once you see the example, okay? But there is a nice shortcut for long division, OK? Um, but we can only do this shortcut when we have fact divisors or factors that look like this. And it, if k is negative, then this would be a double negative. And so it, it could be x minus a number or x plus a number, really, OK? But if you do have your factors like this, where it's just x plus a number or x minus a number, you can use synthetic division. Okay, um, and so the way it works is if you have this polynomial and you're trying to divide it by this factor, you only take the k value. So notice that it says minus here, and I used positive there. Okay, so it'll always be the opposite of what's inside that factor. Or if you already know what the zero is, then you just take the proper sign of the zero. Okay, um, 
Now notice that they put all, only the coefficients in here, okay? And then the process is, is that the first one comes down as is, then that gets multiplied by the K and the result goes underneath B. Then you will add or subtract according to the signs. You will combine those and get this box, okay? You see a little arrow going downward. Then once you know what's in this box, that result will get multiplied by K and it will go here. Then you will combine C and this new result to get this box. Whatever's in this box will get multiplied by K and the answer will go under there. You'll combine these and the last one will be your remainder, okay? Last one's always the remainder. I like to box the last one just so that I remember that that's my remainder and the rest of it will tell me my coefficients, okay? And so again, remember it can be for X minus a number or for X plus a number. It just means you'll take a negative number in the synthetic division. So here's an example. They have synthetic division X to the fourth of this and you're dividing it by X plus three. So if you take the opposite of this X plus three, right? Just pretend you set it equal to zero. You got X equal to negative three as a zero right? So the zero is what has to go out here, okay? Um, it has to be the zero that goes out there, not the number zero, the value of the x-intercept or the quote-unquote zero. So once you have that, you bring the first one down, which is a one, and I think they're going to have it all filled out on the next page. Yeah, I'll turn it over, but I'm going to actually do it because it helps if you just do it, okay? This one gets multiplied by the negative three. So the negative three goes here. And then you combine these. Since this is a positive and this is a negative, um, it's just zero take away three, which is negative three. Then this negative three gets multiplied by that negative three. And the result is a positive nine. Now, when I combine these two, I have a negative 10 combined with a nine. Um, it's like saying negative 10 plus nine and that's going to give me um, negative one. Then the negative one gets multiplied by the negative three, and it gives me a positive three, positive. So negative two plus three gives me a positive one. Then positive one times the negative three is a negative three, and when I combine those, I get positive one again. So remember, this last one is my remainder. All of this is going to give me my quotient. Now remember, they, oh, I didn't even explain that. This is in descending order. So when I go to put in my x to the fourth coefficient, notice they have a one, but there's no x cubed. So that's why they had a zero for x cubed. Then the negative 10 for x squared, then the negative two for x, and then finally the four for our constant. Now, they say this is the quotient, but the quotient is not just a bunch of numbers. It has variables in it. Okay, the easiest way to get the quotient is to call the last one the constant, the next one x, the next one x squared, the next one x cubed, and if there were more, I would put x to the fourth, x to the fifth, x to the sixth, so on and so forth. Okay, so what is my quotient? Um, my quotient is going to be one x cubed, or just x cubed, negative three x squared, so negative three x squared, negative one X, which is just negative X, and then my constant positive one. And then my remainder is just positive one, okay? So here's where they tried to explain it, right? You brought down the one, always bring down the one first. Then you multiply the negative three times the one, that result goes here. Combine these guys, you get negative three, so on and so forth. I like to put plus signs when they're positives, just so that I can read it as negative 10 plus nine and actually do the computation correctly. And then remember when you're done, you can write it like this or you can write it the other way. So you can write it as F of X over X plus three equal to the quotient plus the remainder over X plus three, which is how they wrote it. Or you can write F of X times x plus three times the quotient plus the remainder, which in this case would mean f of x equals x plus three times 
x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 1 plus my remainder 1, okay? So depending on the form that they want you to write it in, that will tell you whether to write it like this with the fractions or to write it like this where it's just the function, okay? Now, this is important. It says the remainder in the factor theorems. So the remainder obtained in the synthetic division process has an important interpretation as described in the remainder theorem. If a polynomial f of x is divided by a factor x minus k, then the remainder r is actually f of k, okay? So what that means is that um, if I were to divide, if I were to have a function, right? Um, whatever it is, if I were to have a function and I were to have a factor or zero, okay? So a factor would be X minus K and the zero would be just K, okay? But if I had a factor, if I had this number and I divided my function by that factor, what they're saying is that if I plugged K into the function, I would get that same remainder value. Okay, so what does that say about zeros? Because zeros we know will divide in evenly, okay? And so if a zero divides in evenly, then that means that the remainder was zero. So for zeros, when you do f of k, you get zero because the remainder is zero. Okay. And that actually leads us up into the um, factor theorem. I'm not gonna do the examples just yet. I just want to explain the factor theorem. So the factor theorem says that, um, that the polynomial value at that zero, quote unquote zero, will be zero, okay? This is important because later, we're not gonna know whether numbers are zeros or not, but we're gonna be asked to find the zeros, okay? And there is gonna be a strategy to finding the possible zeros, but in order for me to know quickly which ones are and which ones aren't, I'm definitely gonna to wanna to use that factor theorem because the factor theorem just says, go plug in the numbers into the function and if you get zero, then it's a zero, right? Um, so that would cut my list down to just a small list, and then I can run from there, okay? Um, but this is just to reiterate the, the, fact, the remainder theorem, okay? So the remainder theorem says that if you're trying to check um, a factor or a value, then um, you just basically are going to get the same thing as you did with, as your remainder, okay? So notice that here it says x minus 2. So that means that this is a value and not a factor. The factor would have been x minus the negative two, which would have been x plus two as the factor, okay? So since they gave me the value, I don't need to take the opposite. If they give me the value, I'm just gonna use that exact value, okay? It's when they give me the factor that I have to use the opposite, okay? So since they gave me the value, I am going to use negative two, and we're gonna go through the process. Bring down the three, multiply by negative two, combine those, I get two, multiply, we get negative four, combine these, we get one, multiply, we get negative two, and we get negative nine as our remainder. So um, we get remainder equal to negative nine. Now, down here, it says that because the remainder is negative nine, we can conclude from the remainder theorem that if I were to plug in negative two into the function, I should get that same value negative nine, okay? And if you don't believe them, they went ahead and did it. So if you plugged in negative two for X and you did the cubing, the squaring, and then you multiply these, multiply those, multiply those, and then brought the minus seven, you do all your computations, you do in fact end up with negative nine. So it's just confirming that that theorem is true, okay? Now, here, this one says, show that x minus two and x plus three are factors, okay? Now there's a long way to do it, 
but there's also a faster way to do it, okay? So the long way to do it is to do the division and see what we get, okay? But notice that it says, then find the remaining factors. So if I wanna confirm that these guys are factors, the only thing I have to prove to you is that if, if x minus two is the factor, that means that two is the value of the um, x-intercept, okay? If x plus three is the factor, then negative three is the value, okay? And why is that important? Because I use the values when I use do synthetic division, okay? Now, all I have to do to show you that they're factors, according to that factor theorem, is all I have to do is find f of two and hope that it's zero and then find f of negative three and hope that it's zero. So I'm gonna program my calculator, clear this. Um, I'm gonna say two stores x, then two x to the fourth, plus seven x to the third, minus four x squared, minus 27 x, minus 18. And I do in fact get zero. So I have shown them that that is a factor. Now, if I do negative three store X and I go back up to my function and I plug in the negative three and I hit enter, it actually evaluates it and I get zero. So according to the factor theorem, that's all I have to do to show you that they're factors is show you that the remainder equals zero, okay? Um, and so the fact that the remainder equals zero means that X minus two is an actual factor. Now, but in order for me to find the remaining factors, I'm going to have to use the ones they gave me to kind of like shrink the function down into something that I can factor because I cannot factor something with five terms. Okay. So the first thing they do is they use the value two and they go through the synthetic division process. You bring down the two, multiply, you get positive four, that's 11. You get positive 22, that's 18. You multiply, you get positive 36, that's nine. You multiply, you get positive 18, and then you get this remainder of zero, okay? That's great. But I have one more zero that I need to take out of the picture, okay? So you're gonna keep these numbers here because you've already removed one of the factors, okay? And then using those same numbers at the bottom, 2, 11, 18, and 9, not the remainder, okay? Now we're going to use the value for this factor. So remember, do the opposite. Um, the value is negative 3. So we bring this down. Three time, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Combine, you get 5. Multiply those, you get negative 15. Combine, you get 3. Multiply those, you get negative 9. Combine those, and you get 0 again, okay? So then... Now that I've taken out the x minus 2 and the x plus 3, we're left with this as our quotient, okay? And you always want to get down to three um, terms because that will automatically be a quadratic because this is your c, this is your x, and then this is your x squared. And we know how to factor quadratics, okay? So that turns into 2x squared, positive 5x, which means plus 5x, and then positive three constant, so plus three. And if you use your um, AC method, you get six, um, one times six, no, two times three, yeah. So you get two X squared plus two X plus three X plus three. These guys have a two X in common. These guys have a three in common. And then you factor out that and I end up with the same two things that they end up with. It doesn't matter the order, okay? As long as everybody's the same in here as they are in there, and everybody's the same in here as it is in here, okay? And so then the total complete factorization would be the two that they gave you, and then the two that you found with the leftovers, okay? And now you have found the remaining. These are the remaining factors that they asked you to find because they were already given two, okay? So with that, all that information, I know it's a lot, 
we're going to jump into our practice problems. So this one specifically says to use long division divide. So that means I'm going to keep my divisor exactly as it is. And I'm going to make sure I put these in order. So x to the fourth plus 10x cubed plus 24x squared minus x minus 6. And then I'm going to do that first person game, right? So x to the fourth divided by x. That is x cubed. And that x cubed will go up top. Then it will get distributed to the front. So that is x to the fourth and positive 6x cubed. Then I have to subtract these. So this one will turn to negative and this one will turn to negative. That will cancel there. But 10x cubed take away 6x cubed is going to be 4x cubed. And since I have two terms out here, I do need to bring one more down so I could have two underneath. Okay. And then now we're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to take the guy in the front and divide him by x. So 4x cubed divided by x is 4x squared. And that goes at the top. It's positive, so I'm going to put plus 4x squared. And then here we go again with the distribution. So 4x squared times x is 4x cubed. 4x squared times 6 is positive 24x squared. And then if I change my signs, this becomes negative and negative. And so then this goes away and this goes away. But I still need to keep going. And I need two terms. There's two terms out here. So I need two terms down here. So I'm going to bring down the minus 6. And I'm going to bring down, or I'm going to bring down the minus x and the minus 6. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Front guy divided by the x. The x's will cancel and I'll just get negative 1 because anything divided by itself is 1. So that negative 1 goes up here. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times positive 6 is negative 6. And then in order for me to subtract, this is going to change to positive. This is going to change to positive. That will cancel and that will cancel, meaning I will have no remainder or the remainder will be 0. Okay. So what is the answer? The answer is um, the quotient x cubed plus 4x squared plus 1. Because all they asked me to do was divide. They didn't ask me, oh, here's a function, factor the function, or do anything weird, right? They just said to divide it. So I did. Now, they want us to do another one, but we're going to use synthetic division, OK? So for synthetic division, these have to be in order. And it doesn't look like anybody's missing. Three, two, one, and none, right? No x's. So I'm going to put those in the box. 2, positive 20, positive 38, and negative 28. And I know that the last one's always going to give me my remainder, right? Now here, because it's written as a factor, I have to find the value. If I were to set this equal to 0, I would have to minus 7 over. So the value is negative 7. Um, and then I start the process. So 2 negative 4 times negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. 20 minus 14 is 6. Negative 7 times 6 is negative 42. 38 minus 42 is negative 4. Seven, negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. And then that gives me 0. Now remember how this works. This is your constant, this is your x's, and this is your x squared. So what do we get as our answer? We get 2x squared a positive 6x and a negative 4 constant. And no remainder, so I don't have to put plus something. OK. Now let's see this one. So this one does have something missing. So I see x cubed is the front, the big guy. So that's x cubed. But then the next spot should be x squared. And there is no x squared. So I have to fill it in with the 0. If you don't, you will get the wrong answer. Then after x squareds are just x, which is a positive 6. And then after x is the constant, which is positive 8. I know after the last number is going to be the remainder. But here, I have to do the value. So this is a factor. If I want the value, I just have to change the sign. So that would be negative 2. 
Now I start the synthetic division. That's going to be negative 6, negative 6, positive 12. That gives me 18, um, negative 36. And I don't know what that is. 8 minus 36. That gives me negative 28. So in this case, when I divided it, I got constant x, x squared. I got 3x squared minus 6x plus 18. Um, so I also have to write the remainder over the divisor, what I was dividing by. Notice I was dividing by x plus 2. This is just the synthetic way that I was dividing by x plus 2. So down here at the bottom should be the x plus 2. And this is how you write your answer. It's your quotient plus your remainder over your divisor. Okay, now um, let's see this one. So number four says write a function in this form for the given value of k and then demonstrate that f of k equals r. So in order for me to do this, I need to find the quotient, which means I need to divide. Um, and I'd rather use synthetic division. Notice they gave you the value and not the factor. There's no x's in here, okay? So when I do this synthetic division, I'm just going to use 3 because that is the value, not the factor. Now I have x cubed, 1 coefficient. I have a negative 1 coefficient for x squared, a negative 12 coefficient for x, and then a 13 constant. I know the last guy is going to be my remainder. So let's bring down 3. Or I'm sorry. I did too much. Bring down the 1. 1 times 3 is 3. When I combine these, I get positive 2. 3 times 2 is 6, positive. Negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. And that gives me negative 5. So um, 1 for part A, I'm going to write f of x equals x minus the k value they gave me times the quotient which is x squared plus 2x minus 6 plus my remainder of negative 5. Now I can clean this up just a tiny bit because a positive times a negative is a negative. And this is what they want for your answer, okay, for part A. For part B, it says demonstrate that f of k equals r. So they want to know that f of 3, because they k is 3, equals negative 5. Well, let's go verify. f of 3 would be 3 cubed minus 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 13. So 27 minus 9 minus 36 plus 13. Let's see. 27 minus 9 minus 36 plus 13. I do end up with negative 5. Okay. So we did demonstrate that that is true. Okay. Now, the last problem, I think this is the last problem. It says 5 of 5. Yeah. Okay, so for this one, it says, use synthetic division to show that X is a solution of the third degree polynomial. Um, and then use the result to factor the polynomial completely. So notice that it's not a factor. It says X equals this. So this is the value, which means I use exactly one half in my synthetic division. Now the highest power here is a cube. So I'm gonna start with the cube coefficient then the x squared coefficient, then the x coefficient, and then the constant. I know the last guy is supposed to be my remainder. I'm going to follow these rules. So bring down the 2, and then 1 half of 2 is 1, positive 1. I get negative 16. Half of negative 16 is negative 8, so I get 30. Half of 30 is 15, and it's positive. So I get zero. 
Now I have done the first part. It says use synthetic division to show that this X is a solution. The fact that I got remainder of zero means that, it, that X minus one half is a factor, okay? And we already know those equivalent statements that if X minus two is a factor, then X or X minus one half is a factor, then X minus or X equal to one half is a solution. Okay, um, but it does want me to use this result to factor completely. So remember, this is my quotient constant X, X squared. So this tells me that f of x equals x minus my value and then times my quotient, 2x squared minus 16x plus 30, okay? Um, and I would usually plus the remainder, but if you put plus zero, it's not really gonna do anything, right? And so I definitely wanna factor this. Now, Trying to think of how to factor this. So we got 10, 3, no, 3, 10. Yes, that will work. So I need to make a negative and a negative. So here I will get negative 6x and negative 10x, which is negative 16x. And then the front guys will give me the 2x squared, and the back guys will give me the positive 30. And so I have factored it completely. Now I did it using trial and error. If you have to do it using AC method, go for it. It's all what will get you there faster, okay? So if you're great at AC method, do that. If you're great at, um, oh, I shouldn't have boxed that. Um, if you're great at just trial and error, then go ahead and do that. The problem is, is that these two have something in common. And when they have something in common, you have to factor it out. So I do have to factor out that two. And then I also need to put the two in the front. So it needs to be two, x minus one half, x minus five, and x minus three. And now you have it. So this is really what should have been boxed, not the other thing, okay? But that is the end of three point, um, 3.3. So factor out the common factor and then just stick it in the front, which is what we have here.